So let me cover the seven, do you know there's seven types of thyroid? Have you heard that concept before? So, <coughs> um, the first type is the pituitary type. Now what happens here is um, the ideal range for TSH is 1.8 to 3.0. Now, don't test me to get many more of those off the top of my head. That's what reference books are for. <laughs> but I do remember that one. Um, and what is hypothyroidism? 3.0 or greater. Some might say 5.0 or greater. Well, pituitary suppression is less than 1.8. Now, when your um, T4 is low and you're a lot of times you'll go into that low range using Synthroid because you're really stimulating that system. I think there's a better way than just stimulating with, with Synthroid, um, but I think Synthroid do, does put you into a pituitary suppression. It's like, your body's, if, we, if we're very trusting of what's going on, like I'll say, every symptom, shift, change in your body is a, is an, uh, um, is a regulation and an adaptation towards survival. Your regulatory system, number one priority is survival. So everything that shifts, if your TSH shifts up, I guarantee you that's a survival me mechanism in your body. It's trying to get the most out of your life. So it's a little bit in the face of that to then go and, and stimulate it. You know, it's, it's not meeting your needs, and clearly it's not meeting your needs because every year you gotta go up. Every year you gotta go up. Which means that something is going down, right? So now if we could go in and actually meet your needs on whatever level that we need to. So pituitary is um, TSH less than 1.8, and the number two is actually the thyroid. This is the one thing the one form of thyroid that they pick up on. And this is the pattern where the TSH goes up. If they check the T4, it's usually below six. Um, and so here's how simple the playbook is. If your TSH is up, we give you enough Synthroid to get it back down. <laughs> You're done. Beat it. Well, I still feel bad. Now this happened to my brother and um, he pushed it because he'd been talking to me and he's like, no, no. And the doctor, so he went in and the doctor was like, we checked you just recently, like, what are you doing back? And like, he said, I don't feel good. It's like, well, everything's fine. He's like, maybe you're not hearing me, I don't feel good. Now we, I, we grew up in northern Minnesota and, and uh, things are a little rough. But he said that I almost came to fisticuffs in the end. He's like, I want more tests run, because I told him that there's more tests to be run if you want to uncover some more problems. And, um, you know, in the end, it was like basically he was handcuffed by the insurance company to do anything else other than protocol, and that was kind of what it came down to, and they didn't have to punch each other out, so that was good. So number three is a conversion problem. Now what the heck does that mean? So in our bodies, in order to get, um, so what do you really want when you want more thyroid function? More available thyroid. But what does that get you? It's like, what do you, why do you want more money? There's something on, on the other end of that money that you want. Why do you want more T4? Why do you want more Synthroid? Why do you want more T4? What does that get you? On a cellular level, every cell in your body has this churning process. And this churning produces, we all learned this in grade 10, ATP. And that cycle is set the rate is set by the thyroid. This churning cycle uses glucose. And of course, if glucose isn't turned into energy, it turns into stored energy, right? 
So this sets your energy levels and your metabolism. So that's what you ultimately want. You want that cellular machinery to go faster and turn on energy. That's what you want. And then, of course, energy allows healing. It allows reproduction. It applies, I mean, everything is dependent upon energy. You can't have hair growth without energy to make that, right? Um, and of course, if survival is the number one priority here for regulation, I can survive without hair, right? That's not the top priority. I can't survive without a brain, and I can't survive without a heart. You know, I work with neuropathy people. Their body says, hey, I can survive without a feet. That's fine, <laughs> you know? It's better than losing a heart. So there's like a couple priorities that it'll, it'll uh, sacrifice everything for to ensure survivability. So here's how it works. The pituitary is what releases the TSH. That's in your brain. And it's sort of, they call it like the master gland. It sort of regulates your adrenals and your ovaries and things like that. Um, <clears throat> it releases thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. And that level tells the thyroid to release a certain level. And so when the TSH goes up, it's like saying, thyroid, get going, get going. You're not producing, you're not producing. Um, the thyroid releases a certain level of T4, and then the liver, mentioned that in the congestion, converts T4 into T3. T3 is then transported through the blood to your cells. Your cells receive the T3, and that's what turns the wheel. So you see how, I mean, there, there's several levels that you can break down on. Um, so conversion is you have ample T4 and you'll never see a TSH because T4 is the feedback system for the TSH. If you're, if you're producing T4, TSH will shut down. That's why you get things in right. Um, so you're not getting the next step. And then number four and number five have to do with transportation. And this is kind of uh, the simple way of looking at it. So transportation of T3 occurs on something called thyroid binding protein. The little cab that moves it to the cells is a protein. And it's affected by a couple different things. Um, well, let me back up. So there's a couple different problems that will happen here. This is why this is five and four and five. No, no transportation. So if there's no proteins to send that, to bring that to the um, cells, you lost the churning at the cell. The other one um, is that there's too many proteins. And there's so many proteins because what happens at the, when needed, it's supposed to release the T3 for the churning of the energy. And if you have too many of those proteins, you don't get enough of the release of the T3. So you have plenty of T4, you have plenty of T3, but none of it's available for getting into the cell. You could have plenty of T4, plenty of T3, but nobody's driving them to the cell. Those are the two transportation issues. Um, number six, who's heard of insulin resistance? Insulin resistance? Insulin resistance? That's diabetes. Diabetes, um, in most cases, type 2 diabetes, is ample insulin, but it's not working in your body. A lot of times, too much insulin, and they have to give more. So what's going on is um, if the way insulin works at a cell, if this is a cell and this is insulin, insulin has to log on to like a key into a certain site, a receptor, a keyhole that fits only insulin. And that is the way glucose gets into the cell. And so on diabetics, it's like, there's no keyholes for insulin. 
Now there's still some, but it's like there's much fewer. That's insulin resistance. The same thing can happen um, with thyroid. Now, TSH looks fine, T4 looks fine, T3 looks fine, thyroid binding globulin looks fine. Um, where we see this most of all is um, on your adrenal panel. We'll see your adrenals are totally, you know, usually screwed up. And then number seven is the autoimmune. Now, depending upon the day with autoimmune, you could be hyperthyroid, or you could be right on the numbers, or you could be low. Because the reality is, it's not your thyroid. It's the level of destruction that's occurring in your thyroid. So depending upon the day, and our immune system, like our defense system, if we were, I guess we are in a war. I don't even, I can't even, I don't even know anymore if we're in a war or not, but what happens <laughs> in a war is this surging and attacking, and then pulling back and you know reorganizing. And that's how it works in our body. So when it's surging and attacking, you might feel lousy and uh, feverish, and you know your your TSH might be really high because it's basically destroying. It's like instead of it being a bacteria, it's destroying thyroid tissue. And then when it falls back, you might feel low, and you know sometimes when the thyroid is being attacked, it's releasing T4 because it's you know exploding those cells. So you might be hyperthyroidism during an attack. You might feel you know, a little too stimulated. And the problem doesn't lie um, in the thyroid. The problem lies in the immune system. Now, the, um, medicine has, for the immune system, in their tool belt, they've got Antibiotics, right? Is antibiotics going to cure autoimmune thyroid? No. Next up, they have radiation. That's what they used to kill cancer. Uh, not a good option. They do that sometimes with thyroid. And then the other tool that they have is chemotherapy. One more. I almost forgot. Prednisone. Now, the treatment is danger more dangerous than the disease. So, they're like, nope, we'll just raise your synthroid every year, every year. And they never really look into the immune system. Now, the immune